Okay, so today I'm going to talk about our 5760 final project, which you can see here on the table. We have a DE2 115 um, FPGA development board, and it is hooked up to a line in and a line out audio cable. The line out is going to these speakers, and the line in is coming from a computer hidden behind these two monitors. Uh, the premise of the project is that it's a music visualizer that takes in audio information, can modulate it through a filter bank and also performs analysis in order to draw novel graphics on the screen, as you can see here. Um, so just a really quick demonstration of how that works in general. I'm going to play a song from a Creative Commons licensed YouTube video. You can see that beat detection happens and the dancers will try and follow basically the strong uh, bass line of the song while the background shows an equalizer um, corresponding to the power spectrum in each of the uh, frequency bins that the filter bank divides into. So that's just a little basic demo of how it works. Um, and now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how it does all the functions that it does. So one of the big things that we had to um, figure out how to do in this project was draw everything on the screen in a manner that wouldn't produce any um, you know, visual artifacts or um, really bouncy motions. We also wanted to have 8-bit color depth on this 640 by 480 VGA display. Um, and to do that, I thought it'd be interesting to really take advantage of the strengths of an FPGA and use a lot of parallel computing as opposed to using a screen buffer. So we actually have individual computers for each graphical element that you see on the screen that are all working in, in parallel. Every um, pixel is rendered in real time, pixel by pixel, every frame. So there's a hardware VGA controller that um, will send requests for color values for a given XY coordinate pixel. Um, that request is propagated through to each element. Uh, we have wrapper modules that will encompass you know, all the dancers, so we can turn dancers on and off. So this scales very well in terms of hierarchy, and then there's all the you know, um, color blocks and background. But essentially, all of these modules and wrapper modules um, take in this XY coordinate and then we'll do a comparison to say whether that XY coordinate is within the region that they're trying to draw in and then um, give an output valid signal based on that along with an output color um, if they uh, are supposed to be drawing in that pixel. All of these output valid signals can then go into a priority queue and the highest priority color will be drawn. So essentially, we're able to use this parallel computing to render a full color VGA frame with no screen buffer. And we're also allowing for um, 3D capabilities. Again, as you can see, we have uh, occlusion as different uh, dancers go in front of one another and in front of the blocks in the back of the screen. Um, the idea with this is that uh, we're using these computers to perform occlusion culling where you have various layers and you can assign different graphical images or objects to each layer. Um, so there's a sense of uh, three-dimensionality. It's essentially an advanced um, sprite graphics. All of the actual images that you see on the screen are sourced from um, ROM blocks that have been initialized using M9K on the FPGA and are then read in. So now that we've talked a little bit about how we're rendering each screen, we should probably talk a little bit about how we're performing the audio filtering. Um, so everything's tied down here to the uh, switches. You'll see me uh, changing all of these uh, switches and that's what's um, controlling whether or not the graphics are turned on. Um, then we also have this bank of seven switches here that corresponds to the um, seven various filters that we are using to drive the color output in the background. So I have a tone generator here that I'm just going to show you basically where the uh, spectral content is for each filter. Um, so we're starting at about 70 hertz right now. The first filter peaks at around 130. And then go up this power spectrum, or I'm sorry, up the frequency spectrum. You can see the response of all the filters. And so the interesting thing that we've done, now we're at about 20,000 hertz, uh, by the way, so it's outside of the range of the filters, but if we bring it back down into some of the middle range, um, we're allowing for audio modulation by turning the filters in the bank on and off. So you'll see that we have um, spectral content in our first five filters. So if we turn off our first five switches, we 
have notched out the sound and you can no longer hear it. So we are basically allowing a user to um, perform, oops, I added another switch, to perform um, notching or basically adjust the levels um, in a binary fashion for their uh, given input song. So again, back to the Creative Commons uh, music from last time. You can see, you know, if we don't want any of the high ends, we just want the bass line. We can do that. If we only want the uh, treble and get rid of the bass, we can do that. So it's neat that we can use these filters just to kind of um, do some fun stuff with the song. At the same time, uh, like I said, we are trying to perform beat detection, which is based on uh, taking the lowest filter bank's spectral content and then low pass filtering that to get an idea of, um, you know, where we have large spikes that are periodic in power. And from there, the human mind kind of does the rest because it's very easy to have your brain kind of find patterns between where, um, where a motion's happening and when sounds strike. So uh, it's easy to make it look like all of the dancers on the screen are actually dancing to the music um, without getting a very complicated beat detection algorithm. As far as implementing the filters, this is another thing that the FPGA really excels at because the filter bank is running at a 50 megahertz clock cycle along with all of the graphics uh, modules, which is what allows them to uh, render at a pixel by pixel rate, whereas the um, audio samples are only coming in at 48 kilohertz. This means that we have about a thousand cycles per sample to perform filtering. So we could implement almost a, an arbitrary number of filters um, on this architecture. So for our bank, we implemented it using um, these uh, second order section uh, bandpass filters. So it's two second order bandpass filters placed in series and we have created MATLAB code that will auto-generate these, the Verilog for these based on an arbitrary um, input frequency range. So by spacing these seven filters nearly logarithmically, um, it's, it's cl very close to a mouse spacing, uh, we can get an interesting spread of uh, spectral readings for the entire song.